Today I'm going to be taking this mini fridge and doing whatever it takes to increase its efficiency. This might require us to raise the speed from its fan or even install a second one inside the fridge. If that sounds interesting, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. All main parts will be linked in the description and let's get started. The first thing I'll do is plug in the fridge, switch it to cooling mode and let it run for a few minutes. To keep it simple, I won't be messing with the heating system in this video. After 20 minutes, I'm getting a reading of slightly above 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of the fridge. Now while that might sound good enough, there are still two major problems. The first one is that a temperature above 40 degrees Fahrenheit is a little too warm for dairy products. And the second thing is that this fridge pulls nearly full power 24-7 non-stop, which we can witness if we plug it into an energy meter. Just look at that, it spiked at 44 watts at startup and it slowly creeps down, settling to 38 watts after 4 minutes. To solve these problems, let's begin by having a look inside to understand how this mini fridge works. At first glance, we are greeted by a giant heatsink, which when we power it on, starts to heat up, while the inside of the fridge starts cooling down. So in theory, if we get the heatsink to cool down even more, we should be able to get a cooler temperature inside the fridge. The first thing that I'll do is to remove the dust from the fan and heatsink, which doesn't take too long and allows more parts of the heatsink to be exposed to air. Now this fridge uses a 12 volt fan to remove the heat, so by upgrading it, we should be able to see a cooler temperature as well. After doing some research, I found a fan that is about the same size in length and width and is able to push over 100 CFM at full speed. Here is a comparison. While it is way louder, it does come with a speed control pin, which allows us to make it spin way slower, thus reducing the noise. Since the new powerful fan is a bit thicker than the old one, I had to cut a square into the back panel. And now that that's done, time to mount it in place. For a temporary test, I chopped off the old fan's connector and I'll solder it onto the new fan. Okay, we have a beefier fan now, but does it work? Well, after letting it run for about 20 minutes, I'm getting just about 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a nice 5 degrees lower. Now while pointing the thermometer directly at the Peltier module, which is basically the cooling generator, reveals that it is 19 degrees. This gives me an idea. What if we install a small fan inside the actual fridge? Will we get even a lower temperature? Let's find out. I'll be connecting the fan to an aluminum heatsink in order to get better cooling transfer. While cutting the heatsink down to size, it started to become really hot. So as an attempt to cool it down, I tried blowing some compressed air, which cooled it down way slower as I hoped. So as a second attempt, I filled up a bowl with water and added some ice, which worked perfectly cooling it down in only a few seconds, due to the fact that water is over 20 times more conductive than air. Mm. 
After heavily modifying the heatsink for it to perfectly press against the coldest spot of the fridge, while being flat enough not to block any food or beverages, I'll make a paper template in order to be precise when drilling the holes. Applying some thermal paste onto the fridge's surface is very important to get the best thermal conductivity when installing a heatsink. Now that the fan is mounted, I'll drill a small hole through the fridge, feed the fan wire to the other side, Silicone the holes. And finally, connect the fan wires to 12 volts. Since the fan is installed, we can now give it a test. After around 20 minutes, I'm reading a temperature of between 33 and 34 degrees, which is not that much of a difference than the previous 35 degrees, but does make the entire fridge about the same temperature. So, I guess I didn't waste my time after all. Now since the focus of this video is to make this fridge more efficient, I'm gonna put together some electronics, which will allow me to set the temperature to something a bit warmer than 34 degrees. I'll be using this digital temperature sensor, which can measure between negative 55 and 125 degrees Celsius. And for the brains, I'll be using an Arduino Nano, which is more than enough for this project. To mount all the components onto the fridge, I'll design a control panel, which has a square hole for a display, and a few holes for some push buttons. After it is done printing, I gotta say, it looks pretty good against the red color of the fridge. But, there's still one major problem. After installing one of the buttons, I realized that I don't have enough space, since the power supply takes up most of it, leaving me no choice but to use capacitive touch buttons. Which I don't like more than physical buttons, but there's nothing better for me to do. So what I did next was 3D print another control panel, just without the holes, for the capacitive touch buttons to be glued on. To mount the display, I'll tape it down with some electrical tape and connect it to the Arduino to see if it is properly aligned before gluing it down. This is just a simple test code. I'll also test the capacitive buttons by hooking up 5 volts and ground. And as I expected, it works. The LEDs go on when applying touch. Now that the control panel is ready, time to cut some plastic, again. And for now, I'll just use some hot glue. To install the temperature sensor, I'll drill another hole. I'll use some hot glue to hold it in place and then use some silicone for a more permanent adhesion. For labeling the capacitive button's location, I normally use a label printer, but since mine is broken and I'm in the middle of fixing it, I'll just use some blank labels and manually write on them with a marker. Before testing out the control panel, to see if we can communicate with it, I'll first have to mount the Arduino inside the fridge and then wire it up. 
I'll use a MOSFET for the Arduino to be able to switch the 12 volts to turn on and off the Peltier module depending on the temperature. Now even though I've used a hot glue to hold the components in place, I'll still apply a generous amount of silicone because it is way more reliable than hot glue and can also handle way more heat. Another thing I did was connect the 12 volt wire for the electronics straight to the power supply while leaving the negative output wire connected to the switch. Doing so will prevent the switch from reversing the polarity, which it normally does in order to heat up instead of cool down, thus preventing the death of the electronics. We can see that the multimeter only gets power when the switch is in the cooling position. So, time to program the Arduino. Now to make it easier, I made three separate codes. The first one is a PWM test code. The second one will test the communication for the buttons and display. And the last one will display the live temperature. Dividing the code in three will make it easier to troubleshoot later on. As you can see, with the first code uploaded, we can see the fan changing its speed depending on what is displayed. I also set up my oscilloscope to show the voltage over time. Here you can see when the display says 25, the fan will be on for 25% of the time and if it displays 50, it'll be on for 50% of the time and so on and so forth. Moving on to the next code. This one is pretty simple. It basically displays what button is being pressed. And finally, the last code will display the live temperature. So if I press a piece of ice against the temperature probe, you can see the temperature drop. And to see the temperature go up, I blow it with a heat gun. Now that we've tested all the features, I put together over 200 lines of code, which is available in my Patreon page, along with the 3D printing files as always. After uploading it, we can see a live temperature being displayed, along with the set fan speed, which we can adjust with a fan button. There is also the set temperature being displayed, which can also be adjusted using the plus and minus buttons. Well, everything works, but let's see if we actually increase the efficiency. For this test, I set it to 25% fan speed and 37 degrees. I didn't set the fan to anything higher than that, because it is just way too loud. After about 32 minutes, it dropped under 37 degrees, which basically shuts off the fan and Peltier module until the fridge goes 1 degree above the set temperature. If we compare it to before the modification, it basically took 20 minutes to reach the same 40 degrees than before. So the question is, did we increase the efficiency? Well, not quite, but on the plus side, we can now have as low as 35 degrees, which is definitely better than the 40 degrees we got before the modification. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, and consider supporting me through Patreon, where you can have early access to my new videos, and you'll also be able to download the Arduino code and 3D printing files. And I will see you guys in the next video.